Hi, my name is Aaron. In this video, I'm going to be making a portable Raspberry Pi arcade. This thing's nice because you can bring it around with you, plug it into any TV, and it works. And because we're running uh, RetroPie on this thing, you can pretty much load uh, any ROM on this. Um, so in the first part of the video, I'm going to be constructing this thing. And then in the second part of the video, I'm going to load some software on it so that it runs. Let's get started. All right, so I'm at my workbench here, and I have all my parts that are going to um, uh, be used to build our arcade cabinet and the first thing we're going to use is this uh, this uh, electronics box. And basically it's just a piece of ABS plastic. Uh, it's pretty cheap. You can find these on eBay and inside we're going to put our Raspberry Pi and all of our wires and then on the top we're going to drill some holes for our buttons and our joystick and uh, this thing <clears throat> If you don't have access to a 3D printer, you can use one of these. I'm also going to link um, on the hackaday.io page uh, plans for a 3D printable case. So if you don't want to drill holes into a plastic box like me, uh, you can just print your own. But I'll drill some holes in this just so you can see how uh, to make it if you don't have access to a 3D printer. The next thing we have is our joystick. And this joystick... Uh, I think I found it on eBay. Um, it's pretty standard. There's the ball for the top. Uh, this is the joystick itself. It has a few switches on the bottom and some inputs. And there's also a ground pin on there. But when you uh, hit forwards or backwards, left or right, uh, there's just a few switches in here that it toggles. Um, and these are what uh, send a signal so that we can uh, pick it up and use that signal to our game. I also have some buttons, and so I have four of these guys. Uh, we're going to use these on top, and these also just are a simple switch with a plastic button on top, and we'll just solder directly to these things. The next thing I have is this uh, ribbon wire, and it's just a bunch of um, uh, female to female wires that we're going to use. We'll take the ends off these and then uh, uh, plug these other ends into the Raspberry Pi so we don't mess up our Raspberry Pi by soldering to it. And then last but not least, I have my Raspberry Pi 3. So I'm going to load some software on this and uh, everything should come together to make your own arcade cabinet. First thing I'm going to do is mark some holes on my case. And so I want my buttons to be slightly staggered. So I'll have one button here, one button up top that's slightly higher. Um, and then on the bottom, one button here, then another button that's slightly higher. And this will just be nice because when you're holding the joystick, you can hit these buttons with these two fingers. And it's not, it doesn't feel weird if you're, um, the buttons are side by side. So the first thing I'm going to do is basically mark off uh, 1.2 inches from the edge. And I'm just going to use my calipers here. And then I'm going to do 1.2 inches from the other edge as well. So right at this point I'm going to drill a hole. And then I'm going to measure another 1.2 inches from this edge, uh, slightly farther down here. And then between these two points I'm going to measure uh, 1.6 inches and mark another. So I'm going to take this second point right here and then measure another 1.6 inches from that line and make a, uh, a marking slightly further down than before. And then I'm going to measure 1.2 from the bottom and this will be for our staggered button. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Next thing I'm going to do is measure once again 2.8 inches from this edge and uh, make the marking slightly lower than this one right here. And then I'm going to measure 1.7 inches from the top. Right, now I have this drill bit and it's not the best drill bit for doing this, uh, but what I'm gonna do is clamp this down to the table and then slowly drill out uh, all four of these holes so that we can fit our uh, buttons in them. 
And this is, these buttons are about 1.8 inches across and then they just snap in uh, to this. So this is a 1.8 inch drill bit. And uh, I might have to do a little bit of sanding, but I think I should be able to get this to work. I've drilled my holes now, and they're slightly too small for these buttons to fit in, plus I have a little, uh, some extra material in here that wasn't completely uh, cleared out by that drill bit. So what I did was I just took a pair of scissors and I just kind of uh, went around the edge like this and removed some of, the, some of that extra material. And then once I had a big enough hole to fill the uh, fit the button in. I just took a piece of sandpaper and just kind of smoothed that edge um, in that hole so that the button just slides right in there like that. Now that my buttons are mounted, I'm going to pop them back out. and then roughly find the middle of this and mark the center. Now I'm going to take my half inch drill bit and drill through this so that my joystick can come through this hole. And now that I have my hole drilled, I'm just gonna put this through here and then flip it over and just mark a couple holes on the other side so that I can drill through this and mount it. All right, so now these holes are drilled and I have a couple four millimeter uh, bolts and uh, nuts here, so I'm just gonna screw this in to the bottom of here with these. Alright, so now this is screwed in and we can put our little cover on top. Then screw in the ball. Okay, so now I'm going to take some time to solder these connections up and then I'm going to break off a five wire strip and use that for this connector. In order to make these connections nice, I'm going to put a couple uh, pieces of heat shrink tubing on the ends of these wires and then I'm going to solder it down and then pull the heat shrink tubing over this wire and then uh, heat shrink it on top of here so that there's a, a nice barrier between these two wires. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that our Raspberry Pi is located in the correct position in our case here. And since I want my uh, HDMI to come out the front of this, I'm going to position it right here. And I want to make sure that it has enough space so that it's um, away from this corner uh, piece that uh, the screw attaches to. So I'm just going to position this where I think I want it. And uh, I'm going to remove this. And I'm just going to draw an outline around this 
so that I know where exactly it's sitting. And so now I know it's sitting here and I want some holes for both my power outlet and my HDMI. I can take this out. On the outside of this, I'm going to draw a line uh, slightly above these USB ports. And I'm gonna do that because I wanna position my um, Raspberry Pi slightly above uh, the bottom of this container. And I'm gonna put some foam tape in there so that it sits a little bit higher, just so I can get some um, cords into the opening. So I'm just gonna draw a nice line here. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm gonna measure it with the calipers later. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just do a line a little bit higher than this. So now I have my lines. I'm just gonna measure on my calipers the exact size of this, which is 18 millimeters. And then I'm gonna add just say maybe five millimeters to that. And uh, I'm gonna draw a line. And the same thing on this, measure that eight millimeters. Then I'll add a few more millimeters. Let's say another five millimeters here. And this doesn't have to be perfect as long as you uh, are able to roughly mark out a shape of a square that you can uh, cut out. All right, so I'm gonna cut that out and cut that out. All right, now that I've cut these out, um, I'm just going to take my Raspberry Pi and I have some of this uh, outdoor double-sided mounting tape. And uh, I'm just gonna cut a piece of this, stick it on the bottom of my Raspberry Pi, and then put my Raspberry Pi in this case. Next thing we're gonna need to do is hook up all of these wires to their respective pins on the Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to put two diagrams on the screen. One is the pinout for the Raspberry Pi with wires um, to their respective components. And then the other is the bottom of this, uh, the corresponding pins for the uh, joystick. And so if you pause your video, you should be able to hook up the wires to their correct places on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm on my Raspberry Pi connected through VNC and I have a Raspberry Pi 3, and it's just running the normal uh, OS here. And so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is download RetroPie, but I wanna make sure that I am still able to use my normal Raspberry Pi um, command line. So I'm just gonna do it through a installation script. So there is this RetroPie setup thing on GitHub and basically it's just a script that allows you to install a RetroPie emulator command line tool that you can use to launch RetroPie. So we're going to use this to um, install that on my Raspberry Pi 3. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is make sure I clone this and I can just do git clone with a depth of one on this uh, repository. So if I just copy this command, and I wanna make sure I have git installed, so I can run this command, and it will download all those files in my directory. So now that it's done, I just want to go into RetroPie directory, and then, um, run this RetroPie setup shell script. So I'll do dot slash RetroPie setup and then make sure I use sudo here. And it will open this little window um, UI interface thing and it will have a few options. So we have manage package, tool setup, uh, uninstall, update, 
perform reboot. We want to do the first option and then uh, the first option again on this, so the quick install. And so running this will um, install the emulation station uh, command line tool on your system. Uh, and that includes all the dependencies and emulators needed to run RetroPie. So I'll do that now. All right, so I just finished installing. And now I'm just going to want to um, make sure I exit out of this. And emulation station is now installed. Uh, however, if I type emulation station in the terminal, it won't work yet because um, it doesn't work with the uh, OS UI. Uh, so X, when X is running, uh, you can't do this. We'll solve that in a second. Next, we'll want to install games on our RetroPie. So after you use the installation script, there should now be a folder on your um, under your user's home directory called RetroPie. If you uh, click on that and then click on the folder ROMs, uh, this is where you put your ROMs for um, the emulator. And the nice thing about RetroPie is it kind of just works with anything. Uh, so if you go online and uh, search for a ROM, uh, so in this case I downloaded a um, Super Nintendo ROM uh, for Super Mario World, you can just uh, place the zip file in this folder and it should work on your emulation station. My buttons are uh, basically GPIO'd um, inputs and I want to make sure that my RetroPie can recognize those inputs as buttons. So there's this repository here that Adafruit um, created, and it's for something called RetroGame. And what RetroGame does is um, creates a GPIO to USB utility for classic game emulators. So when you boot up RetroPie and you have this RetroGame executable configured, and it's running, it will recognize your GPIO inputs as basically USB input. So in order to get this working, we're going to want to clone this on our Raspberry Pi, and I've already done that. So if I go into this directory, so it's called Adafruit Retro Game, and I use Vim, to open retrogame.c. This is the C file that is going to run in the background on our Raspberry Pi. And uh, I want to make sure that I can edit this file, so I press I in Vim and it allows me to edit. And I'm going to scroll down here. There are two sections where you can configure buttons, and we're going to worry about the second one. So in the second one, we have numbers and then uh, enumerations. And these enumerations basically correspond to um, different keys on the keyboard. And so you can say, I want pin four GPIO. When that goes high, represent a key press for the left arrow key on the keyboard. So I've already mapped out um, the GPIO pins that we've used on our arcade box. And so I have left, right, up, and down for my joystick. And these are all the pins that we've configured. And then I have a left control and left alt key, which um, is being used for the A and B buttons. And then I'm going to spend some time to add the other two buttons here. So if you go up here, you can map whatever you want. So say I want key Z, I could just use the key Z enumeration or key X or say you know if I want A and B I can use key A key B and map those to the GPIO pins that we've set up for our arcade box. So if I press escape after I've edited this and then capital ZZ it will save and exit your file and now if you run make retro game it will compile that file. And since I've already compiled it, it says it's up to date, um, but it will build your file for you. So the next thing we want to do is, like it says in the repository, create a rule um, that allows emulation station to see 
um, key events. And so there's this file here called slash etc slash udev slash rules.d slash 10 dash retro game dot rules. This is what we're going to want to create and edit so that um, when retro game starts up, it recognizes this program. So I'm just going to open this with them. So I'll type them slash etc slash udev and open this file. And I've already added this, but what you'll want to do is just copy this line, paste it in your editor, and then do the same thing. Press escape and then capital ZZ and it'll save that file. So now that we have this file changed, um, we can run sudo dot slash retro game and it will start this program for us. Um, and if you want to start it in the background, you can do sudo dot slash retro game and then an ampersand and it'll run it in the background for you. Now I need to exit the UI for the OS and to do that I'm going to hit control alt F1 and that will bring me back to the command line uh, where we started. And I also have VNC running so I'm going to run a command that stops my VNC and that command is sudo service light DM stop and then I'm going to want to run that Adafruit executable file that maps my GPIO to USB so I'll navigate to that executable so then I'll execute the command sudo uh, retro game and then an ampersand to run this in the background. So now that our uh, retro game is running, we can start Emulation Station. Once Emulation Station opens, you should be presented with this screen that says Configure Input. It says one game pack detected because my keyboard is connected, but also since we've set up that retro game uh, executable, it now should recognize our arcade cabinet buttons and joystick. So if I hold a button on my arcade cabinet, it will open up this configuration uh, menu. So for all of these selections, I'm just going to press their corresponding button and it should map directly to um, the, the key press that I want. So for the joystick, I'm going to press up, down, left, right, and now our joystick is configured properly. And then start and select, I'm going to keep on the keyboard, so I'll press escape and select as enter. And then for our buttons, I'm just going to map them the same as a standard uh, Super Nintendo controller. So I have A, B, X, and Y. And then for all these other buttons, I'm just going to skip them. So if I just hold down a button, either on my keyboard or on the gamepad, it will just skip it. So I'm just going to skip everything else on this list. Now if I go over to Super Nintendo, press A, and we can start this game. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it uh, interesting. I'm going to be posting all the modified code as well as our pinout diagrams on GitHub. I'm also going to be posting the full parts list as well as our 3D printable file on hackaday.io. Uh, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to check out other series like our automated robotic bartender that mixes drinks for you. But until then, see you next time.